church fam. How are you doing? I am Monica. Uh, I know you normally see me in the tech booth. Uh, as Cinco de Mayo comes around, I thought uh, I could help Carl out and uh, make one of Tommy and I's favorite um, Mexican inspired meal. We today are going to make pork carnitas in the crock pot and this is what you'll need. So this recipe comes from my aunt. She has it in a cookbook somewhere. I don't know the name of any of that. But she made it for me once and I would like to share with you. And we've made a little bit of modifications to it. And this is what we have. Our pork shoulder boneless preferred, but all we could get was butt. Um, and that's all we could actually get. You want about five pounds or so, but ours is a little bit bigger. That's all we could get in the time of quarantine. Uh, you're going to want real garlic or minced garlic. Uh, you need a juicer or some ways to zest and get juice out of limes. One to two. We really like the lime citrus, so we put in an extra one. The recipe only calls for one, but we like a couple extra citrus. Uh, the recipe only calls for one orange, but we like that citrus. One onion, we gotta have paper towels ready, and a zester um, is happening. In this spice mix here, we have one tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of cumin, and one tablespoon of chili powder, and a teaspoon of pepper. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get your meat out and get the juices out and uh, pat it dry, and then we're gonna rub the spices on it. So once you've patted dry and washed your, your meat, um, your crock pot, if um, low or high setting, depending upon how much time you have in your day to make it, in your crock pot is when you're going to want to rub it down. That's how we, Tommy and I do it. We rub it down with our spices um, inside the crock pot so that way the spices also stay in there. And then make sure you get any like opening or like crevices of your meat. Make sure the whole thing is patted down with spices. I, I, you can push. Uh, so when you dice your onion, you just want a big chunks of onion and just kind of spread it out on top. Um, this e recipe is so easy because once the meat is prepped, all you have to do is put everything on top of the, the pork. Okay, so in the crock pot we have the meat that's been seasoned, the onions that have been chopped up, and eight cloves of garlic uh, in there. And you just kind of throw it on top. We cheated today because we don't have uh, garlic cloves because um, that's not how we cook all the time. <laughs> but that is what is inside. And then next, we are going to zest our uh, fruit and squeeze, we have a juicer, so we're gonna squeeze all the juice and all that goes on top. Uh, so the recipe calls for one zested orange and one zested lime. Uh, and then the juice of those goes in here as well, but Tommy and I like our meat just a little bit more of that lime kick and the lime flavor. And we found adding two oranges of the orange juice, one, one zested orange and two oranges juiced, uh, helps give it an extra kick of orange flavor. Um, and our limes, uh, I'm not the best at this, so we always add a couple more in there to give it just that bit of lime kick, and it's really tasty. So you're gonna want to cork, cook, cork. You're gonna want to cook uh, your meat and things in your crock pot on low for 10 hours or on high for four to six. And this recipe calls for uh, 12 plus servings, so. You can make this one night and then have it for the rest of the week of meals or snacks in between and it's really delicious. So we're going to let the the crock pot stop. I'm done talking. 
We get much juice is out of all that. And all that is like the liquid for the meat to be starting to cook in before all the mat and the fat and things um, start dribbling off. Uh, so we're just gonna pour our juices all on top of there. And that is, is it. That is how you prep for this. And look at that deliciousness. And we will see you guys on the other side of this cooking. Uh, so we are about an hour in of cooking. And I can't wait to open this up and smell it. Ugh, I just love the smell of all that citrus. But um, it smells really good so far. And it looks really yummy. We have about... Um, four more hours or so to go. We are going to peek inside again. Look at all that steam and look at that sizzling. We are bubbling. We are doing good things here. Oh, we're fogging up the camera. We're almost about halfway in and things are looking great. Well, we're on the last hour or so of um, meat being cooked. And as you can see, all that delicious, delicious, delicious um, smells, and it's definitely hot enough. Around this time, I typically check the temperature of the meat to see how we're coming along. And you typically want pork somewhere around like 160-ish um, of temperature. I have a lovely temperature gauge, and I will check that. But uh, it smells really good, and I'm quite excited. Our temperature is definitely there, um, and we could probably start pull, uh, taking it out and shredding the meat up. That's the next step, is to shred the meat, and we'll go from there. Alright, go ahead T. We are pulling out ours, and it's going to fall off the, the forks there. <laughs> and it looks really good, it wasn't the best view, but... There's most of it, and there's some in there, and all that juices and, and fat are things you're going to want to save. Um, you're going to want to. And it's okay if you pull it out a, a, a little bit early, and um, it is it is not 100% cooked through, because what we're about to do is shred seven, this is seven plus pounds of meat, so we're about to shred all this, and get ready for dinner tonight we're gonna shred this and we'll see you on the other side well there's some meat still high it's the best time to shred easiest way to do it is to take two forks pull off a hunk of meat and just start tearing it up we just had a taste of it and it is well on delicious it's really warm and Tommy's laughing at me because I used well on. Sorry, I've been watching a lot of British TV shows. So when you're done with your shredding, um, take a good couple spoonfuls or you can pour a little bit of juice in there. There's a lot of juice. Uh, but we have this wonderful sifter thing and we are going to get the juice out and put the yummy stuff in. While you're doing this, you want to set your oven if you have it to a high broil okay fam family so once you have your meat shredded and juice most of the juice out um we learned that when it's out with the fat it just kind of like congealed as fat and in the fridge when it got cold it became harder and harder to like keep the fat out um, also, it is important to shred all your meat at once well, while you're sitting there doing it because we did learn that it was harder to shred it once it was cold. Uh, so I suggest shredding your meat. Um, so your oven is set on high broil. You have a pan out and you're going to put your serving for the night. Size of amount of meat of, of uh, pork carnitas onto your pan and then put it in the oven on a high broil for about as long as you want it to be crisp. Um, we like ours kind of like crispy and some people don't, some people like a little bit softer. So 
whatever works best for you. Tonight's menu with pork carnitas is uh, nachos. So into the broiler we go. We're gonna tell Alexa, set a five minute timer so we don't forget about it. And then you can take that meat and make it into tacos. You can make it into nachos. You can make it into burritos. You can make it into a, a burrito bowl. <laughs> um, any kind of food you could think of of just eating the meat, maybe. Um, now it's your turn to take it and, and do with it as you want. You know, they used a slow cooker to make their pork carnitas, and it got me thinking, really, about how right about now it feels a little bit like we are in the slow cooker ourselves. Uh, yesterday we talked about not having the wind under our sails, and today here I am talking about how it feels like we're we're living in a slow cooker and we are just ready to be done with all of this stuff. And as I thought about that, I thought about uh, the Psalms and how oftentimes in the songs, people ask how long it's going to be. One in particular that uh, I looked up and thought about was Psalm 90 today. And in verses 13 through 17, here's what we read. Relent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. You know what, what the psalmist is talking about, he's, he's ready to get back to work. He's ready to do what he thinks he's supposed to be doing. He's been in this waiting place. Really, this is, this is a prayer of Moses, the man of God. And I think about Moses' life, and he spends his entire life trying to get these Israelites to a new place, to a new land. Some days I bet he asked God, how long, O Lord? When we think about how long, O Lord, though, we're also reminded of how much sweeter things are when we get to the other side. You know, Moses was trying to bring the people literally to a sweet place, a land flowing with milk and honey. When we look at crock pots, we look at how savory, how delicious, how flavorful food is able to be because of the amount of time it took for the food to be made. And so we look at these pork carnitas and you can taste it when you look at it. You can smell the citrus in it. You can, you can taste the pork smell. You can taste all the fat on that meat. But know that it tastes better because it took a long time for it to cook. Friends, right now, if we are stuck cooking for a long time, I invite you to search for ways that God can use this time in order to really bring out more flavor in your life, bring out more flavor in your faith walk, that you might be more tender, ready to be a pleasant offering for God. Friends, I really hope that you will think through what that means this week and really think through what the end goal for us is, like the nachos that we saw them making this week. I'll give you a minute to look at those nachos and appreciate the end goal and think about what that end goal might mean for your life as well. Here they are. Here are my nachos and they are oh so delicious. I hope you guys are doing well and that you guys have a fun Cinco de Mayo. Thank you.